the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight's story is a comedy with Andy Griffith as your host. Here's a preview. Master, I am a genie. I come from a long line of genies. <laughs> you might say it's in your genes. I might not, Master. <laughs> Don't I get three wishes or something? No, Master. With inflation, you now get five wishes. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Andy Griffith. In these days of rising prices, the typical American family strains to make ends meet. Cutting corners here and skimping there as shrewd housewife just might stretch her husband's paycheck to the next payday. Susie Megan is one such shrewd housewife. Her budget may not allow her to shop in Chicago's loop, but she does the next best thing, and that is to attend neighborhood yard sales. Hello, Mrs. Bolden. How's the yard sale going? Well, I've done very well, Mrs. Megan. As you can see, I don't have much left. Oh, I should have come by earlier in the day. Yes, I sold the sofa and television to a man from Skokie. A young couple from Berwyn bought the refrigerator. Oh, <laughs> it sounds like you're liquidating entirely. <laughs> oh, I've had to. What with Elmer still under observation. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Folden. Is he any better? Oh, the doctors say it's the worst case of delusions they've ever seen. Oh. Oh, my. Isn't this pretty? You find something? Mm, this lamp. How much do you want for it? Oh, I'd give it to you if I didn't need the money so bad. How about five dollars? Hey, it's a deal. Here you are. Mm. Oh, oh, this is heavy. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Meek. Ah, uh -huh. goodbye, Mrs. Bolden. I wish you had better luck with that lamp than my Elmer did. And that's just the beginning of our story. <laughs> A new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, As You Wish, by Mark Trella. Our stars, Norman Alden, Gene Gillespie, and Marvin Miller. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops. For value. Eddie Megan is 46 years old. He works in a factory in Chicago. And 46 years is a long time to wait for your wishes to come true, which is what Eddie's been doing. That's him over there, sitting in an after work watering hole with his pal Russ. Eddie, did you hear the news? Ah, the company's been taken over again. Yeah? Who bought us this time, Russ? Oh, it's some outfit from Ohio. Uh, unified rubber and elastic products, I think. Oh, I wish they'd make up their minds. One day I tell my kid I make plastic ducks for a living, and the next day I'm making ladies unmentionable. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. It creates an identity problem. Well, as long as they get my name right on the check, that's all I care about. How long have you been working here, Eddie? Sixteen years. And how many mergers have you been through? Uh, five, counting this one. This company's been absorbed so many times, we should be making sponges. <laughs> Don't you ever feel insecure, Eddie, about your job? Uh, me? I'm a, I'm an institution around here, just like the coffee break. Yeah. Yeah, it must be nice having all that seniority and not having to worry about losing your job every time the company changes hands. I never worry, Russ. I just wish I didn't have to work. Hmm, doesn't everybody? Yeah, I guess so. But, I mean, I wish I had a long-lost rich uncle or something. One day, the guy turns up, puts his arm around my shoulder and says, Eddie, my boy, from this day on, you'll never have to work. Yeah. <laughs> then he pops an expensive Cuban cigar in my mouth, and I live happily ever after. Yeah, that's real nice, Eddie. <laughs> hey, you leaving already? Yeah, I got to get home, put on the feed bag. Well, see you tomorrow, Eddie. So long, Russ. Uh, 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 uh.
Why, Larry, you better stop now. Your father will be home any minute, and, and you know how he hates music. I love music. It's noise I can't stand. Oh, hello, honey. Larry was just finishing his lessons, weren't you, Larry? Yes, ma'am. Hi, Dad. How are you? Much better. Uh, Larry, you get cleaned up for dinner. Oh, do I have to eat now? Billy Sims is starting a band, and our first practice is at six. You know we eat dinner at six, Larry. Oh, let the boy go, Susie. That'll leave more for me. Oh, thanks, Dad. Someday I'll do you a favor. I won't hold my breath. <laughs> See you later. How was your day? Okay. As of today, I have a new employer. Again? Who is it this time? An outfit from Ohio, Russ said. What's for dinner? I'm, I'm starved. Beans and Franks. No steak? No steak, Eddie. It's not easy being a creative cook on your salary. Okay, tomorrow's payday and you can play galloping gourmet. Tomorrow is also Larry's birthday. I oh, almost forgot. What are we getting him? Well, for openers, we could make a payment on the piano. The friendly finance company called and they weren't very friendly. Uh, vultures. How many payments behind are we? Three. Eddie, what are you doing? Uh, looking for the paper. Times like these, I need my comic section. Oh, they raised the delivery rate again, and I had to cancel our subscription. No funnies? No funnies, Eddie. Gee, this is serious. Maybe Larry could get a paper route to help us out. My son is not delivering papers. He's a pianist. Oh, that's a hell of a mess. Hey, what's, what's this piece of junk? Do you like it? Not until I find out how much it cost me. It's an antique lamp, Eddie. It's probably a thousand years old. How much, Susie? Only five dollars. Oh, the price of a good steak. This is a piece of junk, Susie. But it, it's from the Middle East, Eddie. Arabia. Well, maybe after dinner you can take it back oh, there. Eddie, if we clean all the paint off and polish it up real nice, I bet it'll be worth about ten times what I paid for it. Huh? <laughs> you think so? Let me see it. Uh, here. Oh. oh, it's heavy enough. Mm. You know, it might be made of silver or some other precious metal. You really think so, Eddie? Who knows? It might even be made of gold. this lamp so I can tell if the lamp is worth something or if you've got a white elephant. Ooh, this paint's really on here. Here we go. I'm almost down to the metal. <laughs> Wouldn't it be something if it turned out to be really valuable? Boy, I'd quit my job so fast. Oh, we could get Larry a real good piano. Hey, there's an inscription on this thing. Oh, what does it say? In a minute, in a minute. There. There. In whose hands this lamp may rest are three wishes for the best. What do you think it means, Eddie? Beats me. <laughs> Probably means good luck. Well, that's worth something, isn't it? I suppose. One thing's for sure, this lamp isn't worth much. It's cast iron, probably the cheapest metal around. Oh, well, it'll still make a pretty decoration. It would make an even nicer gift to somebody. You wouldn't dare think of giving it to Larry, or would you? Now, you know me better than that. Well, that's why I asked the question. Where are you going? Uh, I'll be downstairs in my workshop. I might as well finish cleaning this thing up. Oh, this lamp has possibilities. If, if I polish it up a bit, I might be able to take it to Mr. Sachs. I'll give the old weasel a sob story. Who knows, I might get 50 bucks for it after all. Uh, now for a little rubbing compound and some elbow grease. Oh, what, the, what happened? All this smoke. What the heck? Who are you? I am the genie of the lamp, master. Is this some kind of a joke? Is that you, Russ? I can assure you, master, this is no joke. 
Are you sure? With, with an outfit like that, you, you can't be serious. Look at yourself. Gold vest, gold earrings, bracelets, diamonds, rubies, pointed slippers, and a turbine. That's turbine, master. Well, you sure look like a genie. Master, I am a genie. I come from a long line of genies. <laughs> you might say it's in your genes. I might not, master. <laughs> well, since you're a genie, don't I get three wishes or something? No, master. With inflation, you now get five wishes. Five wishes? You mean I can wish for anything and, and you've got to grant it to me? Anything your heart desires, master. Oh, boy, that's the best five bucks I ever spent. Now, what will I wish for? Eddie, phone call from Mr. Wozniak. Oh, not again. He always wants to borrow something. Eddie, are you still down here? Sure, Susie. Go on back up. I'll be right there. Now, why do I always get interrupted at times like this? I wish Mr. Wozniak would stop pestering me. As you wish, Master. <laughs> Did you do that? That was what you wished for, Master. Oh, come on. You're not going to count that as a wish, are you? I mean, that's just an expression. You have four wishes remaining, Master. Use them wisely. Hmm. I guess I'll have to. Say, Jeannie, do you like how I cleaned up your lamp? Uh, pretty fancy, huh? I am most grateful, Master. Such kindness is rare indeed. Ah, uh, don't mention it. Uh, seeing as how I'm new at making wishes, Jeannie, can I ask you some questions? You know, uh, give me an idea of what to wish for. I am at your disposal, Master. Well, what do most people wish for? The Rolls-Royce automobile is quite high on the list. No kidding. Well, what would I do with a Rolls-Royce? And many people wish to become movie stars. Nah, not me. That's one headache I don't need. And still others wish to have their own television shows. Ah, oh, so that's what happened to television. Generally, the wishes are for material wealth, fame, and a long life. Now, that sounds more like it. Inevitably, the owner of the land is corrupted by the power. The wishes are almost always selfish ones, I'm afraid. Well, you won't have to worry about Edward Patrick Megan. There's not a selfish bone in my body. I know what I'll do. I'll make a list of every possible thing I could wish for. Then I'll trim the list down to five wishes. You have only four wishes left, Master. And you have a good memory, Jeannie. I have two. Uh, hand me that scratch pad, Jeannie. Now, let's see. I could use a new fishing rod, reel, tackle box, an outboard motor... Mom, I'm back. Hmm. So I see. What a long face, sweetie. Oh, I can't be in the band. Oh, why not? I don't have an instrument. <laughs> what do you call a piano? Well, Mom, I can't carry the piano over to Billy's every time we practice. And Dad would go through the ceiling if we practiced here. Mm, well, I can talk to him about it. And don't bother. They don't want a piano in the band anyways. I need an instrument that fits in better. Hmm. I see. Like a guitar? Uh-huh. An electric one. Mm -hmm. Billy's cousin is selling one for only $20. He's going into the Marines and he's got to sell it real fast. Can I get it for my birthday? Huh? $20, huh? Well, that, that is a deal. Oh, I'll see what I can do later. Oh, gee, thanks, Mom. <laughs> You're the greatest. Oh, thanks for the compliment and the kiss. Now I'll to bed with you. Mm. I knew I could count on you. Good night, Larry. <laughs> games and a Rolls Royce. There. I'm ready, Jeannie. Jeannie? Hey, Jeannie. Wake up. Uh, yes, Master. You find Jeannie, you are falling asleep on the job. A thousand pardons, oh. Master. Okay, okay, I have my list ready. Wonderful, Master. Uh, look, I've, I've been thinking, the thing I want most 
is to be like these independently wealthy guys who never have to work. Merely wish, and it is done, Master. Right. Look, I have to be careful. I don't want to waste any wishes. Please make your wish, Master. All right, all right. Here goes. <clears throat> I, uh... I wish I don't have to work anymore. As you wish, Master. <laughs> that, that's beautiful. You know what, Jeannie? Tomorrow morning, I'm sleeping until noon. Me too, Master. Just rub the lamp if you need me. Okay, Jeannie, you get some rest. We got a busy day ahead of us. iron lamp is really a magic lamp with a wish-granting genie. And Eddie Megan has already made two wishes. But he may not be ready for the way his second wish comes true and he still has three wishes remaining. Eddie! Get up! Today's payday, you know. <sighs> yeah, I know. <sighs> hey, What's the matter with me? Eddie Megan doesn't have to work anymore. I'm sleeping till noon. <sighs> Is your father up yet, Larry? Oh, not yet, Ma. Oh, that man. Oh, I better hurry if I'm going to catch that bus. Eddie, please, get up. There. Have I got everything? Oh, <laughs> I almost forgot the most important thing. I can't pawn that lamp if I don't have it with me. Good morning, Mr. Jack. Oh, good morning. Oh, Mrs. Megan, how are you? I'm just fine. What can I do for you today? Have you come to buy something back? <laughs> no, not this time, I'm afraid. I'd like to sell something. And what you'd like to sell sacks is in the sack, right? Oh, you're a mind reader, Mr. Sacks. Yeah, in this business, you read minds, faces, palms, anything. Let's have a look. Ah, there. This is it, Mr. Sacks. And what is this? A magic lamp with a genie? Oh, I wish it was. <laughs> How much can you give me, Mr. Sachs? I could give you a hundred dollars, Mrs. Megan, but my wife would have me committed. Uh, I'll give you ten bucks. Ten dollars? Is that all? Mrs. Megan, this is cast iron, a very common material. Oh, but the lamp is so uncommon. Look, look at its shape. The dingy handle, the pointed spout... It's even got an inscription. Mm, that's even worse. Uh, Fifteen dollars, Mrs. Megan. I need twenty dollars, Mr. Sachs. Twenty dollars? What am I, a charity? Uh, I should have my head examined. Only for you would I do this, Mrs. Oh, Megan. Oh, thank you so much, Mr. Sachs. You've made my boy very happy. Today is his birthday. I'm thrilled. Mrs. Meaden, don't you want your ticket? Oh, no. No, Mr. Sachs. This is one item I won't be returning for. <laughs> there. That's one item taken care of, and Larry can get his guitar. Eddie. Eddie, what are you doing home? Why aren't you at work? <laughs> Eddie and Megan doesn't have to work anymore. Are you all right, Eddie? Sure, I'm all right. Never felt better. Well, then why aren't you at work? It's payday, and we could use the money, Eddie. What's for breakfast? Breakfast? You mean lunch. It's almost one o'clock. Oh, what's for lunch? Beans and Franks. Beans and Franks? Eddie, I was counting on your paycheck. I wish I could get groceries without money, but it just doesn't work that way. Last night's Beans and Franks. <sighs> Megan residence? Uh, Susie, it's Russ. Is, is Eddie home? Uh, sure, Russ. Eddie, it's Russ. Hi, Russ. What's up? Oh, nothing much. Uh, how are you, Eddie? Never felt better. Why? Well, you didn't show up for work, and I thought you might be sick or something. 
No, nothing like that. I just decided I'm never going to work again. Well, that's kind of what I called about. What are you talking about, Russ? The head man from the new outfit was in today. He was going to make you foreman of the whole shift, Eddie. But since you weren't here, he, he gave it to me. He said something about being in the right place at the right time. Eddie? Eddie, are you still there? Of course I'm still here, Russ. Well, he also said he was going to have to let you go. Economize. I, I, I tried to explain to him, Eddie, that you're an institution around here, just like a coffee break, but... Well, I'm really sorry, Eddie. Sorry? Uh, I gotta go, Eddie. So long. Those bums. They can't do that to me. Sixteen years and... They can me for missing one lousy day? Eddie, they fired you? Oh, before this is over, they'll wish they never fired Edward Patrick Megan. Where are you going? I'll be in my workshop. Oh, aren't you even going to pick up your paycheck? Oh, I wish someone would tell me what's going on. All right. Where is it? Where is what? The lamp, my magic lamp. Magic lamp? Have you flipped? Humor me, Susie. Where is my lamp? I pawned it. To get enough money for Larry's birthday present. Mr. Sachs again? Uh-huh. Oh, my lamp. Well, I thought you wanted to get rid of it. Things have changed, Susie. I'll say. Next you want a flying carpet. Did you at least get a ticket for it? Well, I thought you never wanted to see it again. Oh, now where are you going, Eddie? You're still in your robe. <laughs> Megan, what brings you here? I don't do alterations anymore. Alterations? Oh, the robe. It's the latest thing. <laughs> well, I wouldn't know anything about that. Well, you might know about the lamp my wife sold you then. Well, I might, Mr. Megan. Look, I, I don't have the ticket, Mr. Sachs, but I'd like to buy it back, if I may. Uh, you may not. Now, don't get technical, Sachs. This is important. I'm sure it is, Mr. Megan, but I no longer have the lamp. I sold it already. You sold my lamp? To an elderly lady, a lamp collector. Why don't people stick to stamps? What's the lady's name? Oh, I can't reveal my sources, Mr. Megan. Uh, I see, Mr. Sachs. Uh, this is where I'm supposed to grease your palm. Mr. Megan, such language. Uh, let's call it a gratuity. Look, I left my wallet at home. How about if I owe you the bribe? What can I say? Her name is Mrs. Arthur Trawick on Lakeshore Drive. Oh, you're all right. You're all right, Sachs. I'll send my boy around with a dollar tomorrow. A dollar? Don't bother already. Hi, Mom. I, I didn't know you played the piano. Oh, Larry, you're home. Is it that time already? Uh-huh. Did, did you get the money for my guitar? Oh, if you only knew how much trouble I had, Larry. Bring me my purse. Uh, here it is. Uh, there you go, young man. And happy birthday. Oh, you are the greatest <laughs> mama guy ever had. Mom. Oh, I know. <laughs> I'll be back later with my guitar. Oh, gee, it sure doesn't take much to be happy. Well, I'd better figure out what to do about dinner. Um, hello, Megan Residence. Uh, this is the Friendly Finance Company. Is Eddie Megan there? Uh, no, he's not. Uh, is this Mrs. Megan? Yes, it is. Uh, as you know, Mrs. Megan, you are three payments behind on your piano. Yes, I know. You see, my husband gets paid today, and I... We need the money today, Mrs. Megan. Well, I'm afraid that's impossible. I'm afraid we'll have to pick up the piano. Oh, you, you can't. Oh, please, wait until tomorrow. I'm sorry, Mrs. Megan. Uh, you've had three chances to make oh, the payment. Just one more day, please. That is our policy, Mrs. Megan. A truck will be by to pick up the piano this evening. Uh, goodbye. <laughs> Who could that be? Oh, goodness. Uh, I'm coming. Yes, uh, uh, oh, my goodness. Uh, Mrs. Trawick? 
Yes. And who are you, young man? Uh, Lieutenant Megan, ma'am. Uh, why are you staring at me? Your uniform, Lieutenant. <laughs> oh, oh, this robe. <laughs> well, you see, we're short-handed downtown, and they got me out of bed. <laughs> <clears throat> I've been sick, you know. Oh, I hope it's nothing serious, Lieutenant. No, 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 just the flu. It's going around. I, I'm almost over it, though. Well, do come in, Lieutenant, and perhaps you can explain what this is all about. I intend to, ma'am. Would you, uh, would you care for some tea, Lieutenant? No, thanks. I never drink on duty, ma'am. Please have a seat. Don't mind if I do. Well, then, Lieutenant, what is this all about? We have reason to believe that you are in possession of stolen goods, Mrs. Trawick. Oh, oh, why, that's preposterous, Lieutenant. Oh? You did purchase a cast-iron lamp at Sachs' pawn shop today, didn't you? Oh, why, yes, but... Uh, why did you purchase that particular lamp, Mrs. Trawick? Well, I happen to be a lamp collector. Likely it... story, lady. It's more likely that you knew the lamp was valuable and stolen. Why, how could I possibly know that? Oh, we'll let the judge figure that one out. Where's the lamp now? The judge? Oh, you're not going to arrest me. Well, that all depends. The lamp, Mrs. Trawick. Where is the lamp? Oh, the lamp? Oh, oh my word. It, well, it, it, it's, it's there on the mantel, Lieutenant. Uh, at long last... Does this mean I'll go to jail, Lieutenant? Jail? Oh, no, I don't think so, Mrs. Trawick. It uh, appears to me that you were an innocent victim, a dupe. <laughs> no, no, I don't think you'll be going to jail after all. Why are you taking the lamp, Lieutenant? Uh, evidence, Mrs. Trawick. Uh, if you'll be kind enough to unlock this door, I won't trouble you anymore. Lieutenant, I don't believe I've seen your badge. Badge? Uh, yes, my badge. I... I don't think you're a lieutenant at all. All right. All right, so I'm not a lieutenant. Hey, you don't have to pull a gun. If you know what's good for you, you'll stay put while I call the real police. The, the, the police? I, I gotta get out of here. Operator, operator, get me the police. This is an emergency. The lamp, Eddie, make a wish. Now, you, you, you stay put, whoever you are. I've got my eye on you. Jeannie, Jeannie, I need you now. Oh. What's going on? I, I, I can't see. At your service, Master. I, I, I'm not afraid to use this gun if I have to. Oh, Jeannie, am I glad to see you. Get me home. You must make a wish, Master. Don't either of you move or I'll shoot. Oh, I wish I was back home right now. As you wish, Master. <laughs> you, Mrs. Trawick. You let the robber in assuming he was a police officer. He questioned you concerning a lamp you purchased at Sachs' pawn shop, and when you produced the lamp, he attempted to leave with it. Yes, officer. Did you get any names, Mrs. Trawick? Of course, officer. You're not dealing with a nitwit. The one fellow called himself Lieutenant Megan, and he called his friend Jeannie. I see, Mr. Trawick. And the lamp is the only item missing? Yes, officer. I believe I have all the information I need. And a great help, ma'am. Mom, where are you? I'm in the kitchen, Larry. Is, is that our piano in the truck out front? It was never really our piano, Larry. What do you mean? We were making payments on it, and we missed a few. So now they're taking it back. Well, aren't you going to do anything? There's not much I can do. I thought you were taking up the guitar anyway. Well, I was for a while. Here, you can have your $20 back. Why? What happened? Well, Billy's cousin got greedy. Now he wants $50 for the guitar. Oh, I'm sorry, Larry. Anybody home? We're in the kitchen, Eddie. And how's my family tonight? Okay, I guess. I'll be upstairs if you need me. 
Oh, what's eating the birthday boy? They came and picked up the piano, Eddie. They did what? Didn't you tell them I got paid today? Sure, Eddie, but they wanted the money, not another promise. We have missed three payments, you know. I know, I know. You think I can't count? Well, don't get upset, Eddie. You were in a good mood when you came in here. Did, did something good happen? You picked up your check? Well, better than that. I got the lamp back. See? Are you serious? Darn right. The lamp can get us out of this mess. Uh, somehow, I think that lamp got us into this mess. Oh, you don't know how much trouble I had getting it back. I really don't want to hear about it, okay? Oh, don't be that way, Susie. What, what, what's for dinner? Uh, I suppose I'll run down to the corner market. I can use the $20 I got from the lamp for groceries. See, the lamp's helping already. Uh, I'll be in my workshop. And don't take too long. I'm starved. Yes, master. <laughs> Now, Mr. Sachs, about this lamp you sold Mrs. Arthur Trawick. Now, if I knew it was going to cause this much trouble, I, I would never have bought it from Mrs. Megan. Did you say Megan? Yes, officer. She's a regular client of mine, you see, and a real fine lady. Do you have Mrs. Megan's address? Yes, officer, yes. Here, here. Uh, uh, 1427 South De Quincey. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Sachs. You've been a great help. All right, Jeannie, you and me are going to have a nice long talk. You summoned me, Master. You're darn right, Jeannie. I got some questions for you, and you better have some answers. Yes, Master. I've used three wishes, and I don't have a thing to show for them. In fact, I'm worse off than I was before. Now, what's wrong, Jeannie? I don't think the problem lies at this end, Master. I've granted the wishes exactly as you made them. Oh? I'm out of a job and my boy doesn't have a piano. You must be precise when you phrase your wish, Master. You wanted to be independently wealthy and never have to work. But you only wished that you never have to work. Yeah, you, got... you did not wish for the wealth. He got me on another technicality, Jeannie. Those are the rules, Master. So whenever I say I wish, you'll grant it. It's that simple, Master. I'm glad I got this straightened out. You wait right here. I'm going to get my list and I'll be right back. Hey, you're back already? Oh, Eddie, could you help me with these bags? Where's Larry? Can't he earn his keep around here? Oh, Thanks, Eddie. Thanks a lot. Look, I'm busy. I got important things on my mind. What could be more important than helping others? Oh, you'll see. Oh, here, here, here it is. I wish you could take a look at yourself, Eddie Megan, because you really changed. Oh, here. I'll, I'll help you with that, Miss Oh, Thanks, Larry. At least someone around here has some consideration. Oh, Larry, could you take these groceries into the kitchen? I'll answer the door. Sure, Good evening. Is Mr. Megan here? Why, yes, officer. I is something the matter? I'll have to speak to Mr. Megan before I can be sure. Well, certainly, officer. I I'll get him. Uh, do come in. You? Um, Eddie? Eddie, there's someone to see you. Yeah, I'll, I'll be right up. All right. Who's here to see me? Uh, a police officer, Eddie. Huh? Evening, Mr. Megan. I see you're wearing a robe. Yeah, is something wrong with that, officer? That all depends. I'd like to ask you a few questions. Yeah, go right ahead. i got nothing to hide. What do you know about a cast iron lamp, Mr. Megan? Oh, that lamp. I knew it would get you into trouble. Quiet, Susie. Uh, what am I supposed to know about a lamp? Mrs. Arthur Traylor claims you stole the lamp from her while impersonating a police officer. Eddie, is this true? Stay out of this, Susie. Well, Mr. Megan? I'm not saying another word until I get a lawyer. Eddie, it is true. I think you'd better come down to headquarters with me. You leave my father alone. He's not a criminal. Just take it easy, son. Larry, please. No, they took away my piano, and now they want to take away my father? Look, officer, you're upsetting my boy. Come along peacefully, Mr. Megan. Oh, this is ridiculous, all this fuss over a lamp. I just wish everyone would forget all about this business of the lamp. As you wish, Master. Now, uh, where was I? I don't remember, 
officer. Do you, Larry? Gee, I can't remember a thing. Do you, Dad? Well, as I recall, the officer was was just leaving. Weren't you, officer? Um, yes, um, I was just leaving. Oh, well, uh, thank you for your help, officer. Good night. Yeah, good night, folks. Larry, uh, I'm sorry about the piano. That's, uh, not the birthday present I had in mind. Oh, that's all right, Dad. It's about time I got a paper out so I could help pay for another anyway. Yeah, that's a good idea. Why don't you and your mother go into the kitchen? I'll, I'll be right in. Jeannie, I know I've only got one wish left, and I'm going to use it now. <clears throat> uh, I wish for the best piano in the world for my boy. As you wish, Master. Oh, and uh, Jeannie. Yes, Master. Could we have a nice satin sheet to cover it? Oh, a nice touch, Master. That, too, is done. <laughs> can't wait to see the looks on their faces. Uh, Larry, Susie, uh, you, you, you want to come in here? What, what's up, Dad? Uh, yes, Eddie. Are you feeling all right? Oh, I never felt better. Uh, now, if you'll both close your eyes, I will lead you into the music room. You sure you're all right, Dad? There's nothing in there. Oh, yes, Eddie. What are you up to? <laughs> you'll see. Uh, open your eyes. Huh? What's under the sheet? It couldn't be a... Piano? Voila. Oh, my gosh, Eddie. It... Oh, it's more than a piano. It's a, a grand piano. Oh, oh, boy. How did you ever manage this? It was worth losing my job just to see the looks on your face. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, I got it. Megan Residence. Uh, is Eddie there, Susan? Oh, one minute. Eddie, it's Russ. Oh? Uh, hello, Russ. Uh, hi, Eddie. Sounds like a party in your end. <laughs> yeah, a birthday party. Uh, Larry, Larry, ho hold it down, okay? Uh, Eddie, about this afternoon, I, I hope you're not angry. No, after all, that's what I wish for. Well, I hope you won't be angry when I tell you this. Tell me what? Uh, the new head man, he wants to transfer me to the main office in Ohio. Well, that's nice, Russ. What's that got to do with me? They're going to need a foreman to replace me, and I recommended you. They said okay. You're not angry, are you? Angry? I could kiss you. Hey, I got to tell everyone, Russ, goodbye and, and thanks a lot, pal. G good night, Eddie. You are now looking at the new foreman of the day shift for the Chicago plant of Unified Rubber and Elastic Products. Oh, Eddie, that's wonderful. Congratulations, Dad. Thank you. Thank you. Now, what's for dinner? Just name it. I wish... I wish we could all have steak for dinner. Close your eyes, Eddie. Close them tight. Huh? We will lead you into the dining room. Uh, what's going on? Now, open your eyes. Oh, boy. <sighs> Candles, a tablecloth, the birthday cake, the good china, and steak. <laughs> Well, is everything as you wished? Everything and more. Happy birthday, Larry. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> and many happy returns. Thanks, Susie. And, uh, thank you, Jeannie. As you wish, Master. As you wish. Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. As You Wish was written by Mark Trella, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Andy Griffith. Our stars were Norman Alden, Gene Gillespie, and Marvin Miller. Also heard were Lou Horn, Jack Carroll, Shepard Menken, and Irene Tedrow. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaks. 
the Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.